Would you like to choose a starting bonus here? On the beginning of our Ascension 20 silent run. Do we have a fairly early shop to capitalize on the money? We do have kind of a weird scattering of elites here. And we do have as our act boss, Hexaghost. So taking damage is not too bad. Love a 250 gold start? I certainly can't disagree. Feels nice and comfy. Maybe I'll go to this store. See options like go to this store and fight this elite? I don't like that. Try to fight an elite before the shop? I don't like that either. Or go to this store and have a good time. Okay. We'll take 250 gold, and I'm going to plan on going to this store through this rest site. So we'll take maybe four combats at an event. I want to take the event last, because if the event is a deal damage to us event, I want that to be delayed as long as possible, so that I have the most information about where I'm going. Uh, this is never strike this guy. We're taking some damage next turn, and there's nothing I can do about it with this opening draw, unfortunately. I'm gonna take... Yeah, seven here. Oof. That hurts. Last Scion, thank you so much for the prime sub as well. Welcome to the cozy sub club. Okay. We at least get a potion and we're offered one of the best silent cards early on, a terror here. Multiplying all of our damage by one and a half and heavily incentivizing us to go physical attack variant silent. I think Gold Start also incentivizes that, as it's easy to pick up a damage bonus relic in the first store. I'm not a huge fan of the Sucker Punch or Dodge and Roll early on. Always happy with the Floor 1 Terror. Terror. Vulnerable for basically ever. Can't say I've ever seen the vulnerable from terror wear off. And if it does, something's gone horribly wrong. This card is Cinder's Bane here. Shlu asks, how do you build physical silent if you don't build shivs? Like none of the other attacks feel like they scale that well. The attacks that Silent has do sufficient base damage that with only a little bit of bonus, they end up in really solid territory. So I think that a non-Shiv physical Silent is often going to revolve around something like um, Sneaky Strike or Eviscerate. You can also use Skewer. If you can generate energy, you can use Predator as a pretty hard-hitting attack. You can use Riddle with Holes. I guess, if you can figure out that one. Finisher is an option, although Finisher likes shivs, generally speaking. This is an interesting choice. Dash versus all attack. I really love Dash for Act 1 Elites as Silent specifically. And we're not fighting Slime Boss, so I don't have that bonus incentive for the all attack. Flechettes can also scale really well. If you get a little bit of strength, Flechettes can be one of the most damaging cards Silent has. But all of these, all of these different ways are, are kind of like one in a hundred runs the, in how often they come together. Uh, so you kind of have to like name all of the different a hundred ways to get there and figure out which one you're being offered the chance to take. It's not easy at all to put together. I really appreciate that playing Terror in two strikes is the same damage as playing three strikes. It means the Terror has an instant payoff. Which is real nice. I'm gonna save this one health. Hello? Alright. Come on. Mario Kart double dash? Hmm. Could also take a dagger spray here, give us some AoE. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Dagger spray is a pretty good upgrade, too. If I take this dagger spray, I pretty much have to commit to upgrading it. 
And the purpose for that is is not for our boss, but rather for any multi-enemy combats we might face. Like in sentries, I'd rather just have the second dash. Though. Hmm. I'm going to take the second dash here. I will look to pick up an AoE card. But I'm going to take the second dash to start. Bring this guy to four. That'll be one weakened strike next turn. And pop the block on you. This one, since it has a base damage value of eight. I don't think I can reasonably kill this one next turn anyway. Oof. Brutal, man. Ow. Like 10. Okay, fine. We do at least get a very good potion. And we're offered Acro, Calculated Gamble, or Backflip. All three are card draw options. Of the three, I feel like Calculated Gamble is the most universally usable. Because it lets you just kind of discard a useless hand to try to get new stuff in play. And it's zero cost discard, which is pretty nice. Yeah, there might be some kind of late game use for diamonds, uh, Storm. Hello and welcome, by the way. We're talking Hades here. You may want to float 10 or so. I remember there being something that cost 10 diamonds at one point that was not a cosmetic item. If you've already got that thing, then you're set. Take this gamble. That wasn't a bad backflip or acrobatics either. Especially with the uh, speed potion. I like the backflip there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why we put this at the bottom. Uh, now I can click as many times as I want, knowing that I can rest on the next floor. So I think I will click a few times. Trade some health for a relic here. And instead of resting, we'll just up... Uh, instead of upgrading, we'll just rest at this rest site. And I might even do it two times. What do you got? One... Two. Two for a ninja scroll. Sort of each combat, add, a sh add three shivs to your hand. It's an interesting relic to receive here, but not a bad one. That's going to be 12 damage on turn one. More if we draw the terror turn one. And we got it at a pretty reasonable price, too. I'll take it. If we can get a strength buff or some kind of attack-oriented relic from the shop, we're going to be in really good shape. I'm personally hoping for a sling of courage. No. Pen Nib's pretty good, though. Every tenth attack we play deals double damage. This is certainly one of the ways to scale a physical attack silence up pretty well. Could consider a Caltrops as well. One way for Silent to augment her damage is with powers. So this can be a really good way to take the relatively low damage output of an attack silence in the late game and scale it up a little bit. So your plan it becomes, against heart, you do 400 attack damage, 400 thorns damage. 800 total damage equals victory. Could look at a lot of cards with Ori. That could help us really build a deck right now. Although notably, every card we get would be unupgraded. Still, it's a lot of card seen. Best of all, I can afford any two of these relics in addition to either a removal or something else, like a Keltrops or something. Maybe there's Catalyst to go with his on-sale Deadly Poison. Ah. Yeah, this is definitely early, early enough to take an Ori. Let's see what's in here. Five card picks. Phantasmal Killer is another way to scale Physical Silence. Backstab. Burst. 
Corpse Explosion. Accuracy. Blade Dance. Okay, well, I'm pretty sold on... Actually, don't take Corpse Explosion. Instead, go Accuracy, Blade Dance, Phantasmal Killer. Does that sound cool to anybody else? Because I like that option. Talbot asks, what happens if you burst Phantasmal Killer? Yes, multiple turns of bonus damage. I think I actually take the Cloak and Dagger over the burst. Or maybe I don't take a card at all. Maybe we just look for more Blade Dances. I think I'll also take a Backstab. For a really nasty turn one with the Ninja Scroll. One backstab is fine. Not two, though. Just one. So now we have some upgrades we need. We want to upgrade Accuracy, Phantasmal Killer, Blade Dance, Terror. Burst Blade Dance. Does work, but... Room in hand. I mean, there's a lot of things Burst can work with pretty well. It's going to be unreliable for now. I think I'm going to skip this. My intended path is still this way. Oh yeah, and I'm going to buy the pendant. And I'm going to remove a card. I think with these dashes, I'm going to remove a defend. Venture combat now. Take an event. Two random upgrades for 20 health. Can I do this on 15 health? Uh, it's a little uncomfortable. Do like the idea of two random upgrades, though. Basically, no matter what it hits. Could instead rest here. Opt out of this elite. Just take more upgrade, less relic. But I think this deck is very much relic hungry. Well, it's relic and upgrade hungry. Hmm. Choices, choices. I'll take it. Hey, good upgrades. Defend and Phantasmal Killer Plus. We're offered a shovel over the blue key. Oh, I did say I was relic hungry. Hmm. All right. I think this might be a bad idea, but this could be really fun too. First up, Gremlins. Gremlins who are extremely dead, courtesy of all of this damage. She should kill you first, huh? No. We'll see. Double Fire Potion. Offered a footwork if we want to get more dexterity. I think that is a really nice thing to do defensively here. Although, puts us further behind on upgrades. A footwork I'm never going to upgrade? I don't think so. No, I took the shovel. I'm not taking that footwork. That can't be how it works. Excuse you, sir. There are seven attacks in my hand, so we are going to get to pen up something here. Okay. Or wait, no, because I can't play them all. Excuse me. Never mind. Zach is doing a pretty good job so far, though. Needs a few more card removes. Needs a few more gambling this. Relics. But if we can up our card draw somehow, it's going to perform really well. Slice is fine. Not great. Same for escape plan. 
Gate plan would be better if I had taken the footwork. I think since I'm planning on digging, we'll take none of the above. Gonna be looking a lot for upgraded cards in future acts. Let's just start digging. Ancient tea set. Unfortunately, this didn't activate from this rest site. Uh, but going further, whenever we visit a rest site, we'll gain bonus energy on turn one. In whatever combat follows. Gonna look for Phantasmal Killer here. Oh, but, but I can just pen nib dash. That seems even better. All right, pretty good turn one against the knob. We get a nunchaku. Here we go. If we play ten attacks, we gain energy, and we're offered another footwork here. I think I'm still gonna say no. Happy New Year's, Mirage Owl. Do I take a wrist blade if I'm offered one here? Probably. Take one block potion, one fire potion. Feels like a really good basic set of potions going into the next act. And I'm worried that I unnecessarily rested and that I should have indeed um, just gone through this path with 15 health. Oh well, let's dig one more time here. Getting ourselves a blood vial. Maybe we'll get bites next act. Maybe. Finally, a turn one accuracy to make these shivs hit harder. Feels pretty good. And I think I'll just play these instead of gambling, although I penned him wrong then. That's okay. Aya! Hexagos looks like it'll be a pretty easy fight overall. Discard that. Let this go. Double dash. Okay, I'm gonna pen up a shiv this time. Decisively defeated. It's a good sign. Ooh. Dig and alchemize here quite a bit, letting us stock up on potions. One potion per combat in exchange for one energy is a pretty fair deal to me. Means I can be more aggressive with the potions. Don't like the Envenom that much. Sure, we do strike a decent number of times, but you can really think of it as just one additional damage per attack we're playing. Versus something like accuracy is four additional damage. And I think we're already headed in a direction of scaling our attack power up enough, thanks to the addition of shivs, that I'm really not worried about a little bit more with Envenom. There's an exponential increase, but it's not as exponential as you'd want it to be in theory. Keep in mind, most fights are only going to be three to five turns long. And uh, Envenom really does start to feel like it's not that worth two energy. Ooh. Hmm. Don't have consistent discard to make hovering kite good. Collar means extra energy only during boss and elites fights. That's where we need it most, though. The deck is quite capable against the shorter fights, thanks to its front load power. Uh, or restricting our future card picks with a busted crown. I don't think it's really ever a good idea to take busted crown going into act two. Are there any other silent cards that say vulnerable? No. Terror is the only one. You can also get the colorless card trip, but that's your only option. All right, I'll go color here. Consistent energy for the difficult fights. And we'll figure out how to get through the regular fights on relatively low energy. Although I'm concerned already about our matchup in some of the fights of Act 3, notably Transient and the Writhing Mass could be very hard on just three energy. That said, if I want four energy per combat, why don't we just fight elites all day and never actually do anything else? Five elites in this act is possible, which is insane to me. 
Um, can we get a couple early events? Yes, I can. And an early shop, too. Which means I could get a chance at bites. And then we can, I guess, try? Question mark? To amass relics. And amassing relics is indeed the name of the game when it comes to making a physical attack silent work really well. Could opt to dig, dig, dig here, but I'd rather win elite fights, if possible, as they're a lot more rewarding than just one relic. Birds. Get destroyed, birds. I'll trade my fire potion here. Yeah, that feels right. Focus on killing the ones that are on the ground. It's only two. I understand. If you let them get back in the air, you have a problem. Generally speaking. You are rude. says plus on it, huh? Maybe. Hey there, Gekline. Happy New Year. Six out of nine cards rare on a P-Box. That's incredible. We do get a shiv every turn, but not on turn one, which is the problem here. But it does help us in the longer fights. I'll give it a try. Theoretically, it works with what we're doing. Oh, that's a pretty good turn one. I could have gotten them to one health if I hadn't played the infinite blades. That'd be pretty cute too. Play accuracy. I was like, do I really not have a kill here? No, I do. Okay. Blade dance. Floose. I think, yeah, now, especially with this, upgrading accuracy is now better than digging, for sure. So I should probably do that at our first fire, but then we can go back to digging after that. An odd creature with a hunched back spurting several tentacles is scrounging through a pile of trash and debris in front of you. As you approach, he shuffles forward towards you in a non-threatening manner. Inloth Hungry. Eid Inloth can offer one of our two turn one relics, either the Ninja Scroll or the Ring of the Snake, in order to increase our chance of rare relics. Both of those would hurt. Losing two cards on turn one would be painful. And losing the three shivs would also be a little annoying, particularly with the Nunchaku and the Pendib. Rare cards that this deck wants include Wraithform, Malaise, Adrenaline, maybe a Doppelganger. Tools of the Trade. Be pretty happy with any of those. But I really don't like the price that we're paying here, especially going into many, many elites in Act 2. Our turn 1 needs to be as strong as possible. No no, thank you, sir. No thank you. Oh. Sneko Skull is here. Do you have one more chance at a bite possibility? Might remove another defend card. Or we could add a footwork. Panic button's a pretty reasonable block option also. 
30 block. And then essentially buys us... We have to kill on the next turn. Could have had the Sneko Skull plus Venom Dream, and that is pretty spicy. Or I can just remove a card and save cash. Alright, I'll remove one defend. We're relatively low on block cards. Oh, but we can add new ones with the Toxic Egg. All skills are now upgraded, and that means this Silent deck is going to get a lot of added card draw, I'm sure. Acrobatics plus, Expertise plus, anything like that that we see is going to be quite spectacular. Oh boy, and we got Gamble turn one also. Beautiful. Can I KO this Red Slaver? How many attacks do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, yeah, so I can actually pen nib the backstab and kill the red guy. So I think that's what we do. Should be able to full block this turn with the block potion. That'll do 22, so we now we start hitting the front guy. Okay, so we'll block potion, play the infinite blades. Great turn one. the top three cards. I mean, I'm only taking one damage right now. Let's just do it this way. Oh, I didn't die. Oh, no. I understand. I still accept the slight price. Get a mummified hand. If we play a power card, something in hand becomes free. That means our accuracy and infinite blades feel better now. This deck is headed in the right direction, chat. Just got the game two days ago and managed to beat Act 3 for the first time yesterday with a Shiv-based silent deck. Congrats! May there be many more wins for you. This game is easy to learn, but so hard to master and so very addicting. Do I go for this Burning Elite? It means I don't get to upgrade accuracy right now. I'd like to upgrade accuracy right now. Did not want a second copy of Infinite Blades. One is plenty. Especially when it's guaranteed turn one. Okay, looks like I'll be playing the Distilled Chaos since I got absolutely no block in this opening hand. Uh, I should have probably Distilled Chaos first in case we hit Accuracy. But I could also hit Calculated Gamble. That'd be a bit of a problem. Well, let's see what happens. Yes, accuracy. I thought so. Well, then die. Big stinky book. The damage. The damage. We should have given Inlot the gift. Dang it. Inlaw, wait, wait, please. Sir, I have something for you. Please. Hmm, I'm actually kind of about a dodge and roll plus here. We have removed several block cards from the deck. And as we get later and later into the game, we're going to need ways to, to block. I think an upgraded block card. 
And now I will take footworks if I see them too. Yeah, let's get this in here so that I can take footworks more happily. I guess I'll trade the cultist pot for the essence of steel. Maybe I save the cultist potion for collector. That'll be an easy way to win that fight. All right, next elite is, ooh, 10 max health, very good. Next elite is the Gremlin Leader. Totally appreciate our turn one damage output at all times. Don't have the other relic. Maybe this was the fight for Cultist Potion. All right. Kaka. They're both the fight for Cultist Potion. I understand. Endurin, thank you so much for two months and keeping it cozy. Much appreciated. Blarg. turn could be awkward. Can't kill you, can I? No, I can't. Alright, we'll hurt you then. <laughs> Oof. Spicy. I've double damaged this turn, so we should be able to kill the Mad Gremlin. I don't think I can get the boss, though, unless the attack potion has something spectacular in it, like a finisher. Wait a minute. No, I can't. Finale. Yeah, this will have to do. This is going to be 16 by 4. That's plenty. That kills. No, 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 no. We don't do that here. Oops. My pen nib. Probably should have played that. I was eyeballing chat way too hard. One phantasmal killer pen nib, please. How many dodger rolls do we want? Is it two? I'll take two. I think I skipped the uh, prior one I was offered, but I'd like two. Ooh, this looks like a spicy turn. Turn one accuracy is fantastic. Wish we could bottle the accuracy somehow. Playing survivor last so I don't have to discard a card. We block for exactly 14 on turn one. This deck is crushing it through act two. 40 damage. Dang. Now we have a fossilized helix, preventing the first time we would lose health in combat. We could take a Cloak and Dagger plus. Actually, rather like a prepared plus. Draw two, discard two. Let's uh, cycle through finding the block cards if we want them, uh, or discarding them if we don't. And we still have one more elite to fight this act. And we get a card upgrade. Neat. That means I can definitely... Um, start digging at fires again. So, I think good candidates for the upgrade include Terror, especially in regular fights. We're on three energy still for those, so we'd like uh, an energy increase here. I think we could upgrade the Calculated Gamble so it's usable multiple times. We could consider Blade Dance, or we could consider Alchemize. I think those are the four really strong considerations. 
I really do like the redraw of the calculated gamble being upgraded. Feels particularly helpful. But an energy upgrade is also solidly con solidly compelling to me. We could, I suppose, think about neutralize. Since we currently don't have any other sources of weak in the deck, getting plus one turn of weaken on that could be useful. But I think we'll be able to pick up an upgraded skill with uh, weakness on it. Either a malaise plus or a leg sweep plus. Before we need it at the end of Act 3. Yeah, currently we really don't need to draw the Calculated Gamble a second time. I think the immediate energy upgrade, uh, and I'm I'm leaning towards Alchemize, actually, so that I can always cycle my potions in combats in Act 3 without having to worry about the energy investment. Or maybe it's Terror, since we always want to play that, too. Oh, Terror. Okay, here's an example of a decent gamble. Or we can just block, right? Can I kill you with a fire potion? I'd have to do 32. We have 12, 23. No, I don't have 32. Hmm. All right, I'm going to discard the shivs then. Block for 15. Oof. Let's see what I can do. Actually, wait on the pendant. Didn't even lose the buffer. Wow. Akabaku is going to make our first attack. Each combat do a little bit more damage. There's the upgraded weakness card I thought we were going to find. It's probably what I'll take here. We could also take another Blade Dance, and that's not bad either. Lastly but not leastly, Invenom. Maybe one more Blade Dance, actually. Two does not feel like enough anymore. And I like more with the Nunchaku. Welcome. Dig. That missed every strike card and upgraded backstab dash? Neat. Very neat indeed. Oh, now we have Akabeko Pendib, too. Exciting. Use this, too. Parka. Easy enough to replace the potions, after all. No accuracy yet, but I do have Phantasmal Killer in play, so this turn's going to be brutal. I guess we'll buffer this hit. And we do this. Wait, I can't kill them both, though, can I? Yeah, this is the Alchemize for now. If I use Dash to block, I can actually just put all the damage into Collector here. Feels like what I should do. That 
It's definitely more damage than I thought it was going to be. I could absolutely a thousand percent just kill right now. And... Oh, we redrew the Alchemize! The perfect draw. Easy. Get destroyed. Now we have two potions again. That was a three turn kill, I believe. Thanks to the power of the cultist potion. Some interesting options here. Corpse explosion lets us win multi-enemy fights a lot more easily, particularly Donu Deca, Spear and Shield are pretty good. I think Alchemize is nice for a more potion generation, although I don't think that we need two Alchemizes. I really like Doppelganger with a free upgrade as well. Um, upgraded Doppel is going to be essentially more card draw, allowing us to have more powerful combo turns. I particularly like it with PK. I'm going to take this. I think Doppel Plus is a little underrated. It's very good, and oh my, we actually get offered the Wrist Blade. Making our zero-cost attacks do additional damage. That is insane. With our Blade Dances, with our Accuracy, with the Terror, with the Backstab, with the PK, it's all coming together. Oh my. Oh my. That's gonna hurt. Does Corpse Explosion stack with itself? Yes, P.U. Desu. Two corpse explosions means the enemy will do damage equal to twice its max health when it explodes. Extra relics from the Calling Belt would have been sweet too, but I'm taking this wrist blade. Hey, hey everyone. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel to do what I love every day. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. I think that's a really cool find here. Shivtacular. Oh man. Let's hit a store and remove a strike because yikes. I have too many strikes in this deck. Wish I could remove two, but we have to go for the Burning Elite. We'll still go for three of them, though. Not a lot of events that way. Just one. It's okay. Looking at card rewards in Act 3 is pretty reasonable, also. So my shivs do tw <laughs> 22 damage. What? Hello? Oh, no. Base of 14. Casual style. You know. Did. Love me a Piercing Whale Plus. One of the best defensive cards Silent has access to. Great at shutting down multi-attacks or removing artifact if you need to. Love it. Uh, and I'll take an attack potion over an explosive potion. Membership card gives us discounts at all future stores, including this one, and basically multiplying our purchasing power. I think an Acrobatics Plus would make the deck feel a lot smaller than it currently does. And I really like removing a strike now. Could maybe take Discovery, but I don't think it's necessary. Sometimes it'll make powers, which uh, will make stuff free with the mummy hand. But overall, not required. Could take a Caltrops for more damage against heart with the mummy hand, but I think, again, overall not required thanks to our incredible damage per shiv that we're doing at this point. This deck's solution to Beat of Death is still being developed. Ideally, I'd like to get a footwork so that we can use these dodger rolls as uh, a really effective block. We might also just end up using one or more dexterity potions to get there. But we are at least going to get to look at a lot of cards this act, and I think that's going to help. So attack potion makes a zero cost attack. That zero cost attack gets a damage bonus from 
the wrist blade and a damage bonus from Akabeko. So Dagger Spray does 16 to all enemies twice from that attack potion. Spicy. Yeah, there you go, double dex potion. That could be our beat of death answer. Although I'm probably going to keep cycling at least some of them. Spray, we don't need. Greetings! Foul Jawworm. Creatures. Please perish. Okay, we'll just block this with double dodge and roll, I suppose. Comfy. I prefer to seek for something like a ghost in a jar off the off the alchemize. Does wrist blade with, work with mummified hand as well? Yes. Anything that will make the card zero cost. So Sneko Eye, mummified hand, bullet time. These will all work with wrist blade. Choke could actually be a decent amount of damage. Shockingly. Feels unnecessary. Although it is upgraded, which is kind of cute. I have to go here. So go here, through these elites. 30 plus on a good turn, which is notably way less than a Blade Dance. So our comparison point is Blade Dance plus one energy, um, 84 damage with wrist blade accuracy terror. That's plenty. We're mostly looking for ways to survive now. I'd really like to see a lake sweep or another piercing whale or something. Yeah. Don't want infinite blades in play against a spiker. Bad idea. I think an after image would help a lot in terms of making the stack survivable in the late game. There's the footwork. Okay. We've been skipping unupgraded footworks for a long time. This one I will take pretty happily, actually. And I might even upgrade it instead of resting. Better with Mummy Hand, and now better with upgraded dodge rolls. Both of those have contributed there. Greetings, Giant Head. Prepare to become Giant Dead. Skill pitch, interesting. Oh, I probably should have made sure that I was fully blocking this hit. Let's involve. Let's involve a piercing rail. That'll make it easy. Three more cards, three more energy next turn. On this first big attack turn. Should have a kill here, probably. 
Means I actually didn't need to use my potion, but again, our potions are very disposable. Easy. Frozen Egg means any future footworks will be upgraded. And I do like Deflect Plus now that we've secured at least one copy of footwork. That's a way to help us with the late game blocking thing. Although I prefer backflips. We'll still take it. Setup could make something zero cost for the wrist blade. That's another way to uh, creatively get a zero cost card. I like that. block for an awful lot here. 25 plus 12. 37. This is exactions, right? Yes. Good. There's the Malaise Plus I've been looking for as well. Thought we'd find it from our Act Boss, potentially, but I'm happy to see it here and now, allowing us to remove X Strength from an opponent. That's one of the big ways to deal with Time Eater in a deck like this. Favorite Relic in game? I think mine has to be the Brimstone Genji Goblin Gamer, because it's such a high-risk, high-reward strategy to try to employ. Brimstone is the ironclad exclusive relic that gives you two strength every turn, but all of your enemies also gain strength every turn. So it's kind of terrifying. Are we going to get our boot today from Nemesis? Please, Mr. Nemesis, give me a boot. I want it. Preserved Insect. Okay, that'll make our Burning Elite easier. That'll make Spear and Shield a lot easier. Now we can even more focus on just figuring out how to kill our Heart Bow. And an Attack Potion. We'll take that over a Skill Bond, I guess. Don't want another Backstab. I have to take the blue key here. Hopefully it's not something really cool like... Um, Shuriken. It's not. It's a Darkstone Periapt, and I'll happily skip it. This would give me health whenever we gain a curse, which would probably be never. All right. Double spiker. How will we deal? How will we deal? mistake. Shoot. How will I deal with this? Hmm. By doing 56 damage with one shiv is how. I think we'll be fine. And if you had any worry about Time Eater at all, that should hopefully be an answer as to how that fight's going to go. Cloak and Dagger wasn't bad there either, but I think that Calculated Gamble is better by quite a bit. Bonus damage, Glass Knife. Or are we? We 
Yo, let's buffer this hit. Sweet. Phantasmal Killer and Bonus Draw. A combo of these two cards. Something I've been hoping to show off. The power. Ooh, a well-laid plans could allow us to hold on to cards, although we don't have that many things that are hugely worth holding on to. I think another upgraded power is quite nice. One more blade dance for the road could also be the way to get there. But we need defense, and that's what well-laid plans is going to help with. Grab our red key and the final green key here. Setting us up for Act 4. Malaise the giant head. Slow him down a little bit. Sure. Could have also gambled that hand away. Blessing of the Forge could be nice. We haven't taken damage in so long. Love to see an oddly smooth stone here. One more point of dexterity will help just a little bit more for our late game. And I think a blur is going to really help us capitalize on the block situation. Giving a pretty good amount of block and allowing us to carry block over from turn to turn. Very deadly in combination with this well-laid plans. Our late game block strategy is now starting to really come together, which is good because we're out of time. We're at the late game. And it's going to get real spicy-like from here. Okay, we have a lot of control over this enemy. Since they change their attack intent every time they're struck with an unblocked attack, we can change their attack many times per turn to keep them on the low damage side. It's good. the attack plus block move, please. Not that one. Okay, you're fine with that, I guess. We'll get debuffed, but we still have our buffer. This I like less now. Probably have to use the buffer on this turn. Please no. Okay, that's fine. Buffer that. It's fine. Fairy in a bottle. Not sure how useful the fairy will be. But willing to entertain the idea of it for now. Whatever's kind of interesting here. I don't think we can consistently spend the energy. Maybe once with malaise. But so close, Septipus. Uh, here it is. Very release. Feels like a skip to me. But we could we could maybe take the outmaneuver and put it to use. With four energy per turn in every fight for the rest of the game, I think we'll be okay. Let's do one. Well, do I no, I'm gonna upgrade the footwork instead of digging. One last point of dexterity, and we can dig in Act 4 for one final relic. 
Looks like my buffer goes away right away here. Nothing to be done about it. Don't want to play too many cards this turn, as I want to be able to play cards next turn. Do I upgrade this Alchemize and just play it? I guess I will. Okay. Well, that's one, one way to block the beat of death, I suppose. Double fairy in a bottle. I like it. And I'm going to opt not to play these for now. I want freedom to play more cards next turn. Right. Because this. Double damage. Okay, I'm just going to take the full brunt of this attack to set up a really good turn with Doppelganger here. Get destroyed, sir. You don't need quite that much minus. Let's go, like, blur dodge and roll, then malaise for minus eight strength. That'd be plenty. That way I block this, too. And I'll just roll the timer over here. The aggro with our card plays. I'm gonna save Terror for the second phase of this fight. Time Eater drops below half health, they will purge their debuffs and reset their negative strength. And I'm just going to try to avoid dealing with that. Needlessly. Let's do this. So here's the foolish, foolish turn. Just accumulate block. Get rid of slimes. Lose a shiv. Keep terror and dash. Foolish, foolish. There we go. Piercing Whale, Phantasmal Killer. Hold Blade Dance, hold Shiv. I should be able to kill Time Eater next turn. Because these Shivs are 42 damage apiece. Dang. A Shivtacular Solution. One boss down. That was the first time we took real damage in quite a while. Wasn't too bad, though. Next up, the Woke Bloke, who will gain power every time we play a power. I think that means I won't be playing Infinite Blades here on turn one. That feels right. And I would like to keep my buffer intact while we dispatch these Beard Nerds. Beautiful. Okay, this needs to be played. Probably losing buffer here? Yeah. In which case, I'll just hold on to both of these. Next turn is a multi-attack. It's going to be a big one, too. 12 by 4. Oh, God. 
and I have not drawn favorably. You can definitely really feel the weight of four strikes in this deck on a turn like this. With the Sender's Bane, of course, as always, showing up at the worst possible time to really pitch in there, but we're not taking that much life loss, and we should win the fight from here once we get to the malaise to reset the strength. And old, you know, worst case scenario, we have two fairy in a bottle as well. Make it a big one. I'll take a little bit of life loss here for maximum malaise. Next turn. Want to remove at least eight. Uh, let's see. If I play malaise for seven energy. Uh, the base attack is 6x4, weak brings that to 4x4, four four. so defend and then malaise only takes 4 damage. I'll do that. need to play any more powers yet. Yeah, don't sleep on Dash. Dash is one of the highest numerical value block cards that the Silent has. And so sometimes it's one of the things you need. It's not quite a leg sweep, but not every card can be leg sweep. I guess I want to hold this Blade Dance plus for Shiv Time's next turn, which means there's no point in playing any of this. That's not quite true. Keep these two. Happy New Year, BB Tech. I think I am going to trade one of these fairies for a random thing from the Alchemize, by the way. Yeah, we'll do that now. Get a Forge Pot. Except. Ten leg sweep start when? Hmm. Can that be Jawworm? Hmm. Concerning. Let's see, how worried am I against Spear and Shield? Do I need to pen nib Akabeko? Be a long wait. But there's a, a very, very powerful combo if I manage to get pen nib to nine for the end of this fight, so I'll try to make it happen. Just need one shiv per turn, counteracting the regen here. Happy New Year, Jason Dalton. Oh dear. My health.
Oh wait, I made a mistake. Oh god. Oh no. What have I done? 13 damage. I can get there with the Forge Potion on the Shiv. Which I think I'm gonna do. Yeah. Just buy a new potion or whatever. Two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this pen nib manipulation? Could rest here for quite a bit of health, actually. Seems like our most likely avenue for surviving is to rest instead of digging or upgrading here. It's essentially 12 health. There's enough relics that could save me 12 health. Let's dig. That's one of them. Paper Crane makes enemies that are weak deal 40% less damage rather than 25% less. And we can make up for the missing health with a pantograph here. Weak Potion, extremely good with Paper Crane. Cunning Potion's pretty good as well. Burst could let us duplicate skills. There's a few good skills to burst. Actually, there's quite a few good skills to burst now. I like Master Strategy for the card draw as well. So many good choices here. I think I'm going to go Pantograph, Burst... Weak potion. 35 cards going into the elites. Turn one accuracy. And well laid plans. Glorious. Dash free. Dash gets bonus damage now. Dash does 50 damage with the pen nib. Akabeko backstab does 54. I think we can kill one of these two this turn. Shivs are 14 base. So we have 54 plus 6 by 14. 4 equals 138. Yes, that's enough to kill the spear. And we perfectly block that, too. Hot. Doom. Beautiful. <laughs> Fairy in a bottle. You don't say. Another footwork is the perfect card, I think, to make sure that this deck truly easily survives the heart. And the specimen is, uh, well, that's just cute. Right, we'll take one fairy. I don't think we'll need either. We'll take one fairy with us into the heart. Note that we do take two damage every time we play a card here. So our buffer is at grave risk of being destroyed. Unless we lead with defend. Guess I will get the blades in play. Okay, this is a pretty good hand to calculate a gamble. We're looking to get our footworks and our well aid plans in play. So looking for those feels like one of the best uses of my first draw through the deck. Perfect. 14, I don't think I should play either of these. All right. Multi-attack first. Oof. That means buffer is going down and there's nothing I can do about it. Did not draw the piercing whale or the malaise before this happened. Did not get attacked by the big hit first. But we can at least dramatically reduce the damage with this weak potion. Check this out. 3 by 15? No. 1 by 15. That's the power of the paper crane. Absurd. 
And now it's actually technically better to use the buffer to block Beat of Death. Alright. And I think I should spend this turn doing as much damage as I can. Ow. Thankfully this attack is only for 40. Quote unquote only for 40. Should have done that in the wrong order. Shoot. Fair enough. Uh, I can still play everything, though. Just won't be playing this strike. Actually, I'm not going to bother with this yet. Okay, 18 block next turn as well. We do lose a lot of health here. But we're through the debuffed turns, and I think this is where it starts to get easier on us. Especially with Malaise. Hello? Showing up somewhere here. Okay, there's Malaise in hand. By Doppelganger, what are the chances that I can get through the artifact stacks next turn? Very low, so I think what I should do here is play the Malaise. And... Although the negative strength we apply will be removed from the heart immediately, what what stays is the weaken. And with Paper Crane, that's really all we need, is the weaken to apply. Keep the double and the dash. So this is thankfully only 28, courtesy of Paper Crane. Play this, keep these two. Okay, now we're finally in reasonable territory here. Penyib de Shiv. Colorless potion. Not this turn. Keep. Acrobatics defend Blade Dance. Perfect turn to have drawn Blur. We get to keep all this block into the next attack turn. Could have bursted it. Perhaps should have. Then I'll burst this Blade Dance. Well, I don't have the room in hand, right? If I burst Blade Dance, I'll only get six shivs. Two of them will be discarded. That's okay. Still sets us up very nicely for a kill next turn, perhaps. What do you got? Ooh, panic button. I exempt. Nine plus nine plus. Oh, we're so close. Here, we'll do it this way. GG. Mr. Hart. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.